The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Hey everybody, this is The Ashholes. Each week, they smoke a different cigar, sometimes the same cigar, but mostly different, and they give their honest impression. They always assign an official Ashholes rating to that cigar. So, pull up a chair, light up, relax, be an Ashhole too. It's very rewarding. Welcome, everybody. Broadcasting live from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. This is the Ash Holes, March 7th, 2023. And today, Brian Charles, who worked in cigar retailer, in cigar retail, and has been uh, in Bangkok, Thailand, now Michigan, and hopefully someday Salem, New Hampshire. We'll see what we can get out of uh, Brian Charles. We're going to find out what is the difference of cigar retailer from from state to state or state to different countries. Uh, Aaron is not here. That's why I'm doing the intro here today. Aaron is away, as is Chrissy. You don't see uh, Ed Sullivan if you're watching on YouTube. Ed's on the wheels of steel. I'm here. So you're taking care of that. Chrissy's out, Aaron's out, but Dan is here. I'm here. So uh, we're bringing in uh, Pinch Hitting for us. Helping us out here is Brian Charles. Brian, welcome to the Ashholes. Thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, th- thanks for doing it. And uh, you do listen to the Ashholes. I do. Yeah. yeah. And um, our first um, mention of Brian Charles, you may recall, call if you listen to the Cigar Authority, the first time was a uh, message from Brian from um, Thailand uh, saying that he listens from there. And maybe you have that there, Ed Sullivan? I think I can make that happen. Hi, this is Brian Charles, living in Bangkok, Thailand, Mr. Jonathan's favorite city. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. So you sent in, a, you sent in an email before. For that, I think, what'd you call that? The stink, stink pipe? pipe. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was when the stink pipe first debuted. Okay. And I tried to get my wife to say it all in Thai. Ah. And then I was going to translate it. And she mm. was too shy. And we kept going back and forth to speaking in the phone. And she, she gave up. Mm. So I went and recorded that And you that did one. that from so, there? From Thailand, yeah. And you sent an email into us before that. Or was that was the first time was, was I, the stink pipe? I might have emailed before that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I recall. I, I yeah. think so. I think so. And uh, you came up to visit us once before, um, and now making a visit here to New Hampshire just to get away for a few days. Get away, come smoke cigars, hang out with you guys, and just... As opposed just to what you normally do every day. <laughs> I don't get to enjoy it, like, the, uh, like sitting uh, down and relaxing. Absolutely. Like I, totally get yeah. I get it 100%. I get it 100 percent. Everybody thinks that, you know, uh, we sit there and enjoy cigars, but most of the time is taste, tasting and testing cigars, which kind of takes the fun out of it. You can't just sit and relax and shoot the shit, but you're, you're really trying to pay attention. It take, takes it out of there. But uh, we're going to light something up nice tonight. Um, I, I think you've had this before. You've tasted this. So brand before it's been in the care in the cigar authority care package a few times that's the only time i've had it and ah. I, actually when i came to visit you in 2020 we smoked some then as well all right so. beautiful so so what do we have here dan so today we are lighting up the Atabe idolos this is a cigar made in costa rica it is a four inch by 55 ring gauge cigar with a wrapper of ecuadorian shade undisclosed binder undisclosed filler but part of it is on is disclosed in peruvian lajero the price is $23 a cigar or $574.99 for a box of 25 And you can find this cigar on twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. So you also may remember uh, Brian as um, we went down to go see Brian, and uh, it was the perfect airport pickup mm-hmm. um, of coffee and donuts and pizza and <laughs> uh, cigars offered immediately. Uh, he opens his humidor, as he did today, and I got to to know um, that you liked great cigars, top-of-the-line cigars. That's what's in your humidor. There was no mediocre cigars. Everything was top-class last time, and everything is top-class this time. So you like good cigars. Well, I do like good cigars. Yeah. Um, at work, I don't really smoke the good ones because I'm constantly putting it down and picking it up, yeah. and you're running around and not enjoying it. So yeah. I collect all the, the great rare cigars, and I always buy a handful because I want to sit on some 
for some, some time. Yeah. I want to smoke one, and then I want to be able to share with guests as well. Yeah. Because there's nothing better than sitting around enjoying a good cigar well, and, you, and a good you, beverage. The ultimate so. sharer, and, and we, we have uh, Chef Charlie here, and he had not looked at his cigar um, that, that you gave him earlier, and Ed guessed before he went to look at the cigar and said, I bet you that's the chef's addition because he's a chef and uh, you just don't, you don't miss a, a thing. You're, 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 you're nice. really, really good at what you do, which is, you know, you, you are, are there to service customers and... Hospitality. That's it. Yep. You're, you're awesome at it. So, uh, all right, we are, this is the uh, Atabe Italos. Uh, it's time to light our cigar or we taste it first. Yeah, have a cold draw. See what you think. My palate's burned out from all the coffee we've been drinking. <laughs> yeah, we drink a lot of coffee. Um, but this is where I get that cherry sweetness out of Atabe all the time. There it is. I can cold draw, blind the cigar. Yeah. And because nothing else does that that I've ever yeah. had before. No, no and even it. on the cold draw, you get the cleanness mm. that continues throughout the whole cigar. It's very clean taste. It's faint. Yeah. It's like cherry skin, not, <laughs> not the flesh. There you the go. Cherry. Where's Mr. Jonathan? He's right there in the audience. <laughs> Maybe just cherry su skin. sucking on a cherry pit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to light our cigars. Brought to you by Perdomo, the hottest brand in the land. A company founded on quality, tradition, and excellence. This is where we're going to take one draw and decide the flavor notes, the strength, character, everything about the cigar. Here we go. One draw, that's the law. 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 It's brought to you by Abuelo Cigars. You're going to live under my roof, you're going to play by my rules. Abuelo Cigars. More full body than I remember. For, for an initial puff, People think this is a mild cigar, but it's got plenty of strength. I would say this is a 5 out of 10 in strength. Okay, I was going to yeah. go 4. All right. So but 4.5. Yeah. I'll right. split yeah, the difference same. with you. Pretty straight down the middle, yeah. I think. But, no, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and any tasting notes, some almonds, some... Uh, what are you giving us, hints? Hint of vanilla. Yeah, there's almond. nuttiness there. Almost like an almond butter. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I mean, like, like Ed said, it's, just, it's clean. Like, yeah. You know what I mean, it's just. The one draw is hard to figure yeah. out what it, what it is, but we'll, we'll get to it uh, when we get to it. So um, um, what are we doing? Okay, so Brian, your cigar career, um, you were born here in the United States in New York. Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, yep. New York. And you take a vacation. Yep, went out, took a vacation. Uh, 30 you weren't days. in the cigar business at all. No, never smoked a cigar in your life. Smoked a cigar. I, I must have been eighteen or nineteen, and been making some money, and wanted to feel like a hot shop. Okay. And I walked into my local tobacconist, and doing a little research, uh, everyone said Opus X is the best cigar. Right? Okay. So I walked in. I said, "Do you have any Opus X?" And the guy looked at me like, "You fool." We don't right. have any Opus X's. Yeah. It was your first time? And I said, yeah. And he goes, smoke one of these. And he gave me a Padron. It was either a 26 or a 64. Okay. And it was not great because it was my first time and it was very bold. And I remember yes. choking on it. And That was a bad mistake on his. Right? Wouldn't yeah. you, you'd say now that you, this is what you do totally. for a living. Yep. That's not Absolutely. what you want to do to no. somebody. In there. No. But I was able to get enough out of it that I enjoyed the process of sitting down and enjoying that cigar. Yeah. Never really smoked them. Again, you know. Well, that, the problem was because he gave you the wrong thing. He gave you a box pressed, full body Nicaraguan on mm -hmm. the first shot out. You're asking for trouble. And I retro hell yeah. all the time. Because you were a cigarette smoker. Cigarette, yep. You still do it? No. I okay. quit cigarettes when I got into cigars. And you quit retro hailing? No, do I still retro hail. Yeah. Always. All the time. You take it all the way in? You take it. I mean, not into my lungs, no. but I fill the cheeks. Okay. And, yeah. And, and retro hail. So we, we barely do that. You know that. Do you do that, Dan? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Depends. I have a hard time with that. Now with anything, now with a Padron 1964, that wouldn't be a good time. But So how do you get into the cigar business? You go on vacation. Go on You've vacation. you had one cigar your whole life. Mm -hmm. A few in, you know, yeah. in between then. Went on vacation, uh, hung out at this bar, after hours bar in Thailand for three nights in a row, and the owner hired me on the spot. 
showed up at midnight the next night and started bartending and spent the whole vacation working at this bar. Cigar bar? Nope. It was just a, oh, regular, just a, bar. Old, just a regular old bar. Okay. Wow. So I did that for three winters in a row. So the first time I went for 30 days, and then the next winter I went back for 90 days. And the hmm. next winter I went back for 90 days. And the owner said, aren't you sick of going back and forth? And for a young man, you, you was, are a, a snowbird. Right, I was right probably, in. yeah, I was probably in my early 30s okay. at this time. But I've always been a snowbird ever since I got out of the military. I went into the food and beverage being a waiter or a bartender. And I lived in a uh, small town in southern Utah, which was a tourist town in the desert, the high desert. Okay. 5,000 re residents with a million visitors a year. Wow. Um, and we got winters off because nobody came to this town in the winter. Yep. So I would get unemployment, three months off, and I would just save all my money and travel the world. Oh. Just do whatever I wanted yep. to. That's cool. Great. So I moved back to Buffalo for some uh, family time, be with my parents as they got older and siblings. And I got a job in Buffalo, and I was sitting there interviewing with the chef, Charlie will like this, and uh, I pretty much got hired, and he looked at me, he goes, do you have any uh, plans for taking time off in the future? And I said, well, I've been taking three months off a year for the last seven years. I'd kind of like to keep doing that. It doesn't have to be all at once, but you know, a month here, a month there, and he just stared me down, and I could see him thinking, and I said, I'm not getting this job. And he stared me down, and he goes, okay, you can take December to March, but your ass is mine the rest of the year. Don't ask for a day off. Mm. And uh. I said, okay, so I took that job, and then, uh, I like to have three months yeah. off. Oh yeah. my God. That might, an interview with me would be over. Be, <laughs> all right, this conversation is over. Yeah. So I had a friend uh, from Canada, Toronto, who was a graphic web designer who was snowboarding in Thailand in the winters. And he knew I traveled and he called me up and he said, you're going to love this place. It's my last winter here. I'm going to go explore somewhere else. Come sleep on my couch. It'll be a cheap holiday. I'll show you everything. You'll love it. And I said, okay. So I bought a ticket and then started working there on the fourth day. So on the third winter of going back and forth, that boss wanted to hire me full time. And I said, I can't, I can't afford to live here on what you pay me. And he said, that's okay. Just go home, save up enough money for six months, you know, to feed yourself for six months and I'll get you a full time job. And I said, okay. So I went home. I put in my nine month notice. Wow. And uh, saved up like 15 grand, all I could muster at that yeah. time. And I moved to Thailand. And on the fifth month, I was pretty much running low on money. And he never had got me a job. Oh, wow. I started to panic because um, now I have a family and I'm trying to like start a new life and the money's running low and I didn't want to come back to New York, you know, with tail between my legs. Oh. And one of the regulars at the bar said, oh, you're looking for a job. I got a friend that owns a bar. They need a manager slash bartender. So I went interviewed and they hired me. And it's a guy from New York who ran a really artsy style bar. And I just made cocktails for a year for him. And then one of my regulars... Uh, had a friend who would come in on Friday nights and she ran, she was the GM of a cigar bar of three cigar bars in Thailand, in Bangkok. And she came in one night, she came in the next weekend, and she came in the last weekend and she leaned over at the end of the night and she goes, I hate to do this because my company doesn't work like this, but you need to come work for me. Nice. And I said, what do you do? And she goes, we run a cigar bar. I said, I don't know shit about cigars. And she goes, that's okay, we can teach you that. I want your personality. I want the way you treat customers, the staff, all that. That's what we need. We'll train you cigars. So I went and interviewed and they hired me. And they said, so the cigar thing, uh, we have a small retail shop on an island at a five-star resort. We're going to send you there, smoke all you can, learn all you can. When you think you're ready, we'll come down and test well, you, huh? and you come back to Bangkok. There you go. So the wife and I packed up, went to this island, and I smoked cigars every day. For how long? Nine months. Nine <laughs> months of practice cigar smoking. You we, get about 15 minutes here, yeah. just so you know. That's how that works. I sit with everybody 15 minutes, maybe an hour, yeah. tops, and oh, my God. We were supposed to be there a year, and we just got bored of the island. I mean, we just had island fever. Yeah. There's only so much you can do on an island that's, you know, four by three miles wide. So, And, um, and how does one get ready in nine months to learn about cigars? I just cigars? smoked every day. That's how I found you guys, the Cigar Authority. I was just... Looking wow. on YouTube, and I found you guys, so I'd sit in the shop, and I'd smoke cigars and watch you and watch all your back episodes. <laughs> I watched any documentary you could find on YouTube about the farm. Like, you know, Rocky's yeah. got one. Perdomo's got They all got one. Fuente, I just watched all, and I just ate all this information. And then um, my wife really said... Really, like, cigar college at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. So after nine months, my wife said, I want to go back to Bangkok. I miss the city life. And I said, just stay. It's three more months. We, we'll do it in a year. And she goes, you're ready now. Just go now. Or I'm going back. You're going to Thailand and you, you're to Bangkok and you come meet me. And I said, fine, I'll call them up. So I called up the owners and I said, I think I'm ready. And they're like, it's not even a year. You, 
you got all this information in a year? A year, my and God. I, so they came down, and I worked with the restaurant chef at the at the hotel, and we put together a five course dinner paired with a whiskey and some cigars, and they just quizzed me and sat back, and they said, "You you nailed it. This is great. Come back to Bangkok, and we got a small location for you." And how long did you stay there? I was there uh, with that company four years. Okay. And in Thailand, total full time seven years. Okay. Yeah. So maybe it was five years with them. Yeah. You were the guy in Thailand. I, I, I looked you up after the fact. Uh, apparently, you, you applied for a job here, which I never heard about, <laughs> uh, till after you got a different job, and then looked you up, and there were many reviews of saying, you're the guy in the country. It was a lot of fun. There's um, the, the market in Thailand, it's more geared towards Cubans. Yeah, I would right? imagine. So yeah, all, yeah, makes sense. all the rich Thais want to show off and, and smoke Cubans, and all the tourists want to smoke Cubans because that's what they're used to. You know, a lot of Europeans, yeah. a lot of Australians, very few Americans. You did know. you have New World cigars or just Cubans? We did. This company that I worked for did have New Worlds. Um, we had maybe five or six brands. Okay. So, so what's, what's the big sellers in, in Thailand for uh, cigars? Co- Cohiba. Cohiba, Monte Cristo. Yeah. yeah Romeos, Partagas, all that. And um, size-wise... You know, where you see people smoking 60 ring gauges here, is it, is it all mm. Coronas, Lonsdales? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Robusto. Thin, yeah. yeah. Thinner cigars. Makes and sense. and um, <clears throat> people from around the world traveling there or, or, or yeah. locals? No, the Th- Thailand's a world destination. I mean, yeah. they've got world-class beaches and food. I mean, yeah. it's, they're always ranked in, you know, one of the top foods in the and world. And what, do you feel it was necessary for you to go nine months to learn everything about cigars after you've gone into the position and said, wow, good thing I have this knowledge that I have now. Or, it definitely oh helped, but you always say that you never stop learning. Right. You know, like I never, never, I never feel like I've learned enough. Yes. You know, and we're always learning. Yeah. So. But just wondering if the custom is required, um, you know, that they came in smart enough or they came in, you know, they're, they're all amateurs to begin with. And, oh, here, try this Romeo because it's lighter. And it wasn't a lot of that. Nope. Guys the, come in and they either know what they want or they're tourists and want the Cohiba or the money and they yeah. just grab them. So it was, it was yeah. a tough sell. You know, the, the New World cigars went more for like the expats that live there that are on a budget. Okay, because of price. It was, mm-hmm. Yep, it was, it was a little cheaper. Not yeah. cheap by our means. You know, like a $8 cigar here back then will cost you 20 to $30 there. Wow. So no. versus, then, uh, yeah, then. Now you know, it's five well, plus years ago. Right. Now it's all doubled up in price uh, since then uh, over there. So uh, then for, for whatever reason, you decide, all right, I've had enough here. I'm going to come to the U.S. and make a life. Or I knew that I never wanted to be back in America. Either did my wife. You know, when I met her, she said, uh, if I marry you, are you going to want to you know, take me to America? And I said, no, I don't want to go to America. I'm, I'm here in Thailand. I'm starting a life here. This is my life. And she said, good, I'm Thai, I love my people, I love my country, I'm never leaving. And I said, okay, great, settle, this is perfect. And then... Uh, but didn't we just see her at lunch? Yeah, you yes. saw her at lunch, so <laughs> she changed her mind. Um, right. She knew, I talked her into it, that I could have stayed there and, and ran a bar, right? The, the owners that I originally worked for sold. And okay. whenever you sell, things change. And the new mm-hmm. owners, cigars were not their priority. Yeah. So I could see you know, my future kind of narrowing there. And uh, talking to people in the industry back here in America, they said, just drop what you're doing and come to America. That's where you need to be. You'll see what a joke it is anywhere else except America. Yeah. So I applied to you guys. (laughs) Talk about a miss. My God. Yep. The resume never made it to your desk. Never did. And then um, talking to some other people, some guys I had uh, in the U.S. Embassy there. A lot of my customers were embassy folk. Um, some of the guys were from Michigan, and they said, you got to check out this place in, in Michigan. They're top-notch. And they are. And I sent a resume to them, and they called me, and we went back and forth for a month or two just trying to work out details. And Well, and you, didn't end, you certainly didn't end up in a bad place. You ended up in an awesome place. Uh, it's called Churchill's. What yep. city is it? Uh, Birmingham, Michigan. Birmingham, Michigan. And we took a ride down there. And just so you, you, you got to check it out and see Brian when you go there, Churchill's in Birmingham, Michigan, where you can dine, find food. And let me tell you, the food was sensational. Uh, an unbelievably stocked bar and an unbelievably stocked humidor. They have it all. And if let me tell you, if I had a place like that, I wouldn't even leave. I mean, there was no <laughs> yeah. reason to leave. I mean, the place was so great. And they have three of them. Three, yeah. 
It, it really is an amazing place. I, I landed at a great spot. My mom always says I, I have a golden horseshoe up my ass. Yeah. No matter what I do, I landed to a great situation. Like who moves to Asia and gets hired on the third right. day, and, which turns into a, a career for me. Um, but it's been like that my whole life. Wow. And you're happy where you are? Extremely Everything's happy. good. Uh, it, I'll tell you, the people are happy with you there. And uh, I saw you work in the humidor and work in the room. Your forte, you'd say, is, your, your, is personality? Yeah. Yeah. So. I never went to college. I was terrible at school. But uh, being a world traveler, you kind of learn to connect with people. Yeah. And I just had a knack for it. And that, if we listen, if any retailers are listening here, that is the key. Um, you, don't own the, you don't own the business, but that's the front line of somebody coming in and dealing with you. And you have your people, right? They come in and they see you. Yeah. Not necessarily the place that it is, but this is a, a very special place. I wish we had something here in New Hampshire that mm-hmm. offered all this, but it's against the law in the state to, to eat while yeah. you smoke. Do you have competition there? There is a few. There's a lot of places, actually. I don't get to see them much because yeah. I work six nights a week, and when I'm not at work, I'm, you know, I don't hmm. want to go out. Yeah. Um, but from what everyone tells me, from all the repeat customers, that we're, we're the best. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Uh, speak, so, uh, I mean, you come pack, and not only do you, uh, do you, when I show up, you do the perfect pickup, but you also brought 12 different coffees to, to sample, because that's another one of your things, uh, and you made the coffee for it, but I want you to taste this coffee. You were from New York, but you never heard of this? No, Buffalo is not quite New York. We get a lot of, a lot of flack <laughs> for claiming we're from New York. All right, <laughs> this is called Manhattan Special, and this is coffee soda. And uh, it says right on here, delicious. So, you know. <laughs> oh, <it's>, no. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and, and Dan is not a coffee drinker. You don't drink coffee at all. Nope. So it's espresso soda. Mm. It's not bad, though. It's very light. I thought it was going to be more bold in yeah. your face, but it's uh, nice. Years and years ago, I found this when I went to New York. I was a kid, and uh, ever since then, I've always loved it. It's funky. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not in a bad way. It's just it's just different. It's very different. It's not it's certainly not Coca Cola, <laughs> but. Uh, <clears throat> It's just so something for you to try there anyway. So uh, let's go to break, and when we come back, let's talk more to Brian and find out um, the differences of uh, the cigars, what people like from country to country, from state to state, and here he is in New Hampshire. We'll see how different it is with us here. So come, we'll come back. We are the Ash Holes. Only Great Leaf makes great cigars. Aganor Salive stands out because of the distinctive mouth-watering flavors of the Corojo 99 and the Criollo 98 seeds, cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands in Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of the JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of the Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you will experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganor Salive different than any other tobacco in the world. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganor Salive. Hello, cigar aficionados. This is Klaus Kellner from Davidoff Cigars. I invite you to taste the elements with Davidoff Escurio, Nicaragua, and Yamasa. From water comes originality. Savor the sweet and spicy originality of the Davidoff Escurio tobaccos born by the rains of Bahia, Brazil. From fire comes intensity. Enjoy the bittersweet aromas and fiery intensity of the Davidoff Nicaragua. From earth comes complexity. Taste the earthy flavors and complex spices that are unique to the red soil of the Yamasa region in Dominican Republic. Only Davidoff Master Blenders could take the power of nature and blend it into a range of exceptional cigars. Each element making each cigar a unique experience. Water, fire, earth. Flavors that have risen from the very world itself. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Davidoff Cigars. Cigar adventures to a wider world. Looking for a Mao cigar? Don Rafael is just that. Solidly constructed, and it offers up a mellow experience that holds a ton of universal appeal. This is just one of the reasons for Don Rafael's enormous success. Looking to get your friend into smoking cigars? The Don Rafael cigar is absolutely the right choice. The brand originally set out to outdo the competition, but for the price, there is no competition. You can't beat Don Rafael. It outsells them all. 
Don Rafael can be enjoyed any time of the day, all day, and cigar after cigar. The Don Rafael has a smooth, mellow aroma that will not linger. Draped in a seamless golden brown Connecticut wrapper, Dominican long fillers, and a Dominican binder complete the blend. Expect earthy notes with some hints of cedar throughout. And as far as quality everyday blends go, for a mild cigar smoker, it doesn't get more satisfying than this. Remember this, Don. Don Rafael. Agent Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning cigar smoking can cause cancers of the mouth and throat even if you do not inhale. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head, and value, value, value. There are a Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian, and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five year old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well aged long filler leaves. So, what you do expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional, a flavorful journey into sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original, unconventional cigar. Take a journey. And we are back live in the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. Today we're smoking Atabay Italos. And we are the Ashos. If you don't already follow us on social media, please do. Social media, we have uh, Facebook at the Ashholes on Twitter, at the Ashholes on Instagram, at Ash Holes Radio, and if you're just listening, subscribe to us on YouTube. That would be nice. Hit the subscribe button and all that stuff. We have Brian Charles here. He is a retailer out of Michigan right now, and uh, so he, he's done it in uh, Bangkok. He's done it in Michigan. He comes here to New Hampshire, and he looks around. And you see different cigars and things like that. Um, you've seen our customers. You've seen your customers, and you've seen your customers um, in t- Thailand, what is the difference of the cigar consumer from, from area to area? I mean, our place is a little different because the, you know, the town that we're in, it's a, a very wealthy and affluent town. Yeah. So, and uh, that's who you get is just locals or are they coming from everywhere because of a restaurant and everything? Yeah, we get, a, we get everywhere. Yeah. Um, but between Thailand, just being in the industry, 90 plus percent of the people I think don't really know or care. Like, they're just there for the experience. Sure. It's very few that you get the guys that know what they want, that know what they like, and are willing to try something new based on a recommendation. You or get people out. going there from far away. Like, if, if I flew anywhere in the Detroit area, I would now, that I've been there, make a point to say, well, that's where I'm going to dinner. I don't care where I have to, what I have to do. I'm going there. It's a destination to yeah, go there. Yeah, for sure. We yeah. do get that. Mm-hmm. And so you'll see people from other places and say, oh, first time in here, and you take a picture and you see, you know. And they do she, exactly what you did when you came in there. Yes. You looked around and you went, wow, this is incredible. I yeah. wish I had one of these in my state. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, because how many, how many states, I mean, I don't know, but how many states can you even eat dinner, serve food, like actual meal, and the, smoke it? See, the bad thing about Ed and I is we used to go to restaurants yeah. right in Boston, around right. here, everywhere. It was a normal thing. Oh, yeah? In the 80s through the 90s, it was normal. Now, anybody getting into into the cigar industry in the past 20 years, it's such an anomaly. It didn't happen. But I think it's yeah. actually worse for us because we had it and you took it away. Yeah. And it was so great after dinner to light up a cigar. And, yep. and Ed and I would even light up. During dinner. Oh, in yeah. And Why wouldn't you? Yeah, right? I'd be a fool not to. <laughs> and do you see that? Do people eat and smoke at the same time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice, right? <laughs> My God. Um, well, uh, 
what what do we got? I'm looking at. I have a. Um, well, you, you have a letter in the mailbox. We got to get to. I do have a letter right, in the mailbox. So let's hear that. All right. This is coming to us from Scott Trepto. Listening to the secondhand smoke show, and I have a question that you probably answer on that other cigar podcast. So we did the secondhand smoking on this show. Yes. Yep. Yes, we did. If the ratings typically are 70, 80 ish, up to 100, 10, just like the strength rating you talked about, shouldn't we stop the nothing below 70, 80? So why? nothing below seventy or eighty, or it it should go lower than that. Yeah, why why aren't we using the full scale? If one hundred is I in am. theory a perfect score, yeah, why not do a one to ten and break each down to the tenth? Uh, you know, it, w- it was um, cigar aficionado that yeah. started the hundred point scale on cigars. They weren't <laughs> the ones that started it in, in the wine industry. It was somebody else that right. did that first. Um, and what ends up happening is. You know, you say eight. Is it an eight and a half? Is it, you yeah. know, that, that'll right. start to happen. The problem is something right. in eight. Just like the strength. Yeah. Uh, when with four and a half. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> um, why doesn't you see many cigars that go below a 70? It's a fair cigar. If a cigar is made of rolled up tobacco leaves and we're smoking it, and especially it's made its way to the retail environment. It's got many ways to get to before it gets to retail. Right. It had to do a lot of things. It's already fair to begin with to be yeah. able to make it into commerce, right? Yeah. So I think anything that made it through commerce is going to get, you, you would imagine, into the 70s at least. Yeah. Uh, and there has been oddball stuff that would get even less than that, uh, even on Cigar Aficionado, into the 60s because it just didn't draw, just didn't burn. Yeah. Draw and burn. It draws, it burns, it's made of tobacco leaves. I think it gets a 70. Yeah, and it, it, like everyone has their own scale, of, especially Aficionado is a good example where they don't do it a lot. But a lot of it, partly with, with Aficionado, they don't really rate Everything that's terrible. Like, they rate the same things over and over yeah. again. Mm-hmm. And if you look at us, and I know Barry gets some shit that they say, you know, you really only, you rate too high and you rate the stuff that two guys carries to begin with. Two mm-hmm. guys has already gone through a process of all those 70s, and <laughs> exactly. we're deciding that we don't want to carry the 70s. Right. I used to carry the 70s too. And then you, you make mistakes. We just had our March Madness sale where we you're dumping 70s, the right? mistakes. Yeah, yep. dumping the mistakes. They make less mistakes, and it's gone through a process of trade shows and sampling and bringing the cigar in. It already deserves to be in the 80s right. at least at the, by the point it right. gets into our store. Right. That, that's how you know how well you did in bringing in new cigars <laughs> when yeah. you see March Madness. Right. And it seems like there's fewer and fewer every year. So After 38 right. years, I'm, get, <laughs> I'm getting a little better anyway, right? Yeah. Get, get better and better. Um, and then now it becomes, you know, anything over 80, 80 to 100, okay? So everything that's in our store, I would say, is 80 to 100. Yeah. yeah. How, how far do you want to get? You know, we know Barry... To, took it out of a 102. Two. It can't be 102. I that, say that was the Alfonso. I think. Okay, uh, you know, I say it's 80 to 100 if it's if it's in our shop. Most likely, that's not a, a big stretch that's going to happen there. How much better can a cigar be? Personally, I'm smoking Atabe. I said 10 years ago, this is the best cigar I ever smoked. So let's give it a 99 just to have a spot for something someday that gets better right. than this. I haven't had it yet, but whatever that is, there's a, there's a spot for it. Uh, I, I usually don't rate cigars except for Cigar Journal right. that we're forced to end up doing it. Um, but, you know, is it... Remember in school, you get an 80 to 89 is B. Mm-hmm. You get a B, good. And then excellent was 90 and above. And, you know, something to me when I'm doing rating for Cigar Journal that gets a 90 or above is an excellent cigar. Yeah. I mean, I would say excellent. It is excellent. Now, you've got a whole bunch of excellence. Yeah. You've got to have something better than the, eight, the 90, which is 91, 92, 93, and it goes up. There's not many things that did over a 95, and you don't even see it yeah. in Cigar Aficionado. No. no. I mean, how much? Now you're an A+, plus, right? 95? Yeah. I mean, I think the highest thing they've rated in the last few years was like a 96, and that was 
three or four years ago, I think that was, I think, the pledge or one, okay. of, one of the EP Carrillos that won yep. Scar of the Year. It was like a 96. Yeah. So, they, yeah. I mean, you also have to protect your ratings, too, because, like, you, you know, you start going, everything is 98, 99. Yeah. Now, and do, pe- do people care about ratings? Do the consumers care? People do do you, your customers care? Some do, yeah. Yeah. Some mm-hmm. do. And do you post it? Do you say yep. that, yeah? We take the, uh, the, Fold out from Cigar Aficionado and put it up in the humidor. All right, Joe, it's still powerful there. Yep. Yep. All right. So, (laughs) not, not to to me, not so. Doesn't happen as much here. Yeah. I'd say the vast. It used to years ago. Yeah, Yeah, but the vast majority don't care. And then your actual geek crowd doesn't care either for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No. Yeah. So, I have. With me, a Dave's Weekly Six Pack. I haven't done that in quite a while. Mm. I have one here today, and I tried something different. I went with the Fonzie, mm. and uh, Fonzie, what did Fonzie used to say? A. Yeah. Yep. So this is all cigars that start with the letter A, Ooh. and back to our high ratings, anything that would get a 90 or above. Is and, it a, and it starts with the letter A. Huh. So I have here Atabay Italos, which we're smoking here. This is $23 a cigar, by the way. Mm. Yep. You get one of those. You get an Avo Maduro Robusto. Oh, you love that. Love Maduro. that cigar. Good smoke. $10.69. Abuelo Nieto. Mm-hmm. Abuelo, grandfather cigar. Ten forty nine. dollars 49 Arganosa Real Leaf. Eleven sixty nine. The Alec Bradley Dark... Broadleaf Robusto. Doc, double broadleaf? Double broadleaf. Double broadleaf it's yeah. a double broadleaf, yeah. Very good cigar. $10 cigar. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> that, that company was bought out, so we include the Alec Bradley in there. And Adventura, another, they had the fire and everything mm-hmm. happened, so Adventura, another one, who, who knows? Uh, King's Gold Robusto, thirteen seventy nine. Those cigars together, $80. But you go at twoguyscigars.com. Put Dave's in the search bar. You're going to see this little hidden thing that's there for you until next week at this time, $59.99. There you go. That's a deal. All right? $59.99. Not bad. All good cigars. So you're getting 60, 70, 80. Oh, you get this almost free. It's $20 Mm -hmm. off. This was $23 cigar. So do yourself a favor. Get one of those. Get one of them. Get two. (laughs) Whatever. There you go. Um, Let's get to it. Let's get two. The top five brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Aloha. Today's top five is brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Choose from the mild white label, the medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavor blue label. Series Five Five has it all. Five Five equals the perfect 10, and that's what you get every time. The only thing better than a Five Five cigar is two of them, so you can share with a friend. And now, here's today's top five list. All right. So today's top five brought to you by Five Five Cigars. I figured with, with Brian joining us on the show, back in the U.S., we go over what are the top five travel destinations in the U.S. ranked. Salem, right? New Hampshire. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> for cigar <laughs> smokers, yeah. <laughs> yep. So starting off at number five, uh, Chicago, Illinois. So, I mean, not a lot of surprises on this list before, but I'm going to preface that before Chicago, we go. Chicago, Illinois? Chicago's fun. Mm-hmm. I mean... Um, we used to have our trade shows there. Yeah. My sister lives in Chicago. I had never been until uh, when she got married. Great restaurants, I'll say that. Yeah, great food. It's fun city. It's it's kind of like Boston, but a little bit... It's spread out a little yeah. bit further, but Chicago, I like. Yeah, and we went to the candy convention there. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we had we had the, the beef that we had to lean over and right. eat. Yeah. The, the beef, the hot dogs, the pizza, yeah. all oh, the yeah. usual. Yep. I gained, what, 15 pounds. We went away <laughs> for it. four days between the candy convention and the food. Oh, yeah. It, what a mess. Super heavy. <laughs> so uh, coming in at number four on this list, Orlando, Florida. So Disney. Disney, mm-hmm. Universal, yeah. all the parks. Yep. Yeah. SeaWorld. So no surprises there. Number three. You're going there soon. Yep, next month. All right. Oh, yeah. Got to get it in. Are you uh, going to be absent from the show? Uh, you know, I think so. All right, we'll make fun of you. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I won't hear it. I won't. <laughs> so, uh, number three is Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, if you're in any business that has trade shows, you probably disagree with that after yeah. a certain number of years, but it's fun. I go there more than anywhere I've ever gone in my life yeah. besides home. Yeah. Uh, but you're not going to relax. 
No, yep. no. It's been a year well, since I went there for fun. You don't yeah. actually know how to relax, right? No, no, not I've really. Been, I've been working on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the next place at number two would I would definitely define as relaxing. Number two is Maui, Hawaii. Oh, I've never been. I'd like to try that. Oh, go to yeah. Hawaii. It's nice. You've been? Yeah. Oh yeah, multiple times. All right. So let let's just guess what this next one's yeah. going to be. Of the United States to visit, could it be New York City? I hate it there. Me too. I yep. hate it. I actually hate it. Yep. But people go there. More people go there than yep. anywhere else. Um, Nobody Miami. Colorado, the yeah. ski places. Nobody wants to go Miami. to L.A., do they? I don't know. Not anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think, Brian? You it's been, New York for sure. New York City. It has to be. People well, all around the world know New York City. Yeah, well, that's a good guess. New York City. New York City. All yeah. right. All right. So, New yeah. York City, you guys Not got going. it. I mean, everyone goes there. No surprise. And then what was surprised me that wasn't even on the honorable mentions that I'll put, Miami wasn't anywhere on the top 15, which I don't know. It's crazy. Everyone goes to Miami now. But the honorable mentions were New Orleans, San Diego, New and Orleans. Washington, D.C. I hear San Diego. San you ever Diego's been? nice. They say it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. I've never been. Yep. I've never been on the West Coast besides what? Las Vegas. That same. That's, yeah. that's it. Oh, that's as far as they, I went. Vegas isn't on the coast. It's kind of in the, the desert. Yeah. yeah, you're getting there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's as far as I ever went. So <laughs> you go a little further next time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's our top five for that's this week. Top five. That's the top. Other countries you've been to? I've been to a lot of countries. I'd say my favorite countries are uh, Thailand, of course. And I think it was 24. I did nine countries in Europe for, I think, like 80 days or something. Been to Italy? I loved Italy, <laughs> but it didn't break my top cities. It was really? um, uh, Budapest in Hungary. And wow, that's odd. Portugal. We're out of all those nine countries. Yes. really nice. I hear that's a surprising yeah. thing, but we have a friend that goes often, and uh, she says it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And Ed, for you, you've been everywhere. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Saigon. I've never been to Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam's mm -hmm. not, and especially the resorts along the coast are, are pretty spectacular. Anywhere in Asia, those beaches are world class. I mean, oh, it's yeah. so incredible. I but gotta get out, man. This I've been, year, I've been uh, to um, uh, Seabrook Beach. <laughs> How was it? Camp. It's all right. Well, <laughs> ne next Camp month too. I'm going to be able to go to Italy, Spain, everywhere. Right in Epcot. I can go to as many that's countries right. as I need Ma to go to. All maybe one that's day. what you should do. Dave. No jet lag? a bunch of them. I'll tell you one yeah. story. When we went to Italy, uh, I went with my cousin. He was my travel buddy at the time. And we have family. I forgot the name of the town. But it was somewhere south of Bologna on the Mediterranean coast. And they had a farmhouse, and they gave us this farmhouse and said, just stay here. Oh, my. And my, my great-grandfather would go to the local wineries and fill up jugs and bring them home and unload them at the farmhouse, and we'd drink wine with him. We took a bottle. We went down to the beach, and I was drinking a bottle of wine, red wine, from the bottle, and I got sunburned so bad on my face. It peeled. My face looked like a raw catcher's mitt, oh right, from above my beard to my forehead. Melting. So the next couple countries I went to, I was like a leper. Nobody, <laughs> nobody would look at me. It was so humbling to like go to a restaurant and, and scare the server. She wouldn't even look at me. We'd walk down the street, and people would look and part ways. So was sunburn? sunburn? Yeah, the sunburn was, was so it bad. like Raiders of the Lost Ark, where their faces all melt off? That's what it felt like. Yeah. yeah. But it was peeling. And you close your eyes. That's how you do it. I finally, we stayed with a friend in Amsterdam, which was probably like three countries later, so about 10 days later. And she took some um, baby like diaper rash cream huh. and put it all over my face, and it kind of healed it up, and the pigment came back, and I was back to normal. Oh, was like, there you go. Hallelujah. There we go. There well, we that's go. not a very delightful story, it is, is it? It is not. I may have one. All right. Now. Are you tired of the news claiming the end of the world? Everyone run for cover! Mayday! Are you sick of turning on your radio and hearing things like this? Code Red, duck and cover! You're all in danger! Well, I think it's time for some delightful news. Brought to you by Cuba Delight Cigars. How delightful. So... As usual, the story doesn't start off that delightful. Is there some cat involved here? <laughs> There's no cat. Yeah. There's a poor 80-year-old high school janitor, Mr. James, who uh, retired, but then a rent hike sent him back into the workforce. Uh, 80 years old, and he's got to raise his rent, and he had to go back to work at yeah. 80. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. But you know what? The students at Callisburg High School in Texas 
have raised more than $200,000 oh, to help him retire. It's a lot of car washes. As of Thursday, the fund had raised 217000 from nearly 7,000 donors. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the GoFundMe was set up by three students, originally had a goal of $10,000, but they ended up with two seventeen. He got to pay taxes on that, and he ends up with a little over a hundred. And then he's got to go back to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's a delightful story. So right? very so nice. Was it just that he was? He, was he a good janitor? Is it just like they was old? Uh, no, I think they just wanted to get rid of him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like all I'm saying is that he was eighty, and he was. Well, working. I'm surprised they hired him. Right, at eighty. He hey. took the job back, but well, that listen. tells you how the workforce is right now. Yeah. It's hard to. Well, get. those high schools, you got to push that big dust mop, and that's yeah. a lot of walking. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, Dave, if I lose all my money and have to go back to work, will you do a GoFundMe? No, for... I'll hire you. <laughs> no, but I don't want to work. I well, just want yeah, money. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> not paying you not to work. Come on. No. It's not even your money. You just set up a GoFundMe. Well, I'm not doing that. I never did one. I wouldn't know how to do it. There you go. Man, no empathy. Go find me. People can be so cruel. <laughs> All right, we have to review this. And uh, listen, this is my favorite cigar in the whole wide world. Still? Uh, Out of It is. It's, yep. it's fantastic. The I Alfon- love it. Alfonso didn't. Alfonso, believe me, I went back and forth saying, did I, is Alfonso a better cigar? But you don't want the strength of the Alfonso. This is it. This yeah. is the most perfect cigar, the closest to 100. The most, the closest to perfect for my personal palate. Yeah. For ten straight years, this is the best cigar I've ever had, uh, and it's out of bay. I love it. Yeah. Ninety nine. Oh, you're still leaving that one though. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. Leave it. Leave the door open. Well, I had. If you're paying attention on, if you're watching on YouTube, I had a score already because I already thought where I was going to go. Yeah. And I pulled it back. So I went. I had a ninety nine, but it went back to a ninety seven. <laughs> Because it's not my normal size, and ah, I had what I is your smoked, normal size? I like more of like a like a true robust, like a five by fifty or a Toro six by fifty. All right, so, so Ritos is a Toro. Yeah, exactly. Of that. This is the most popular by 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 all means. This is not the most yeah. popular. Brujos size. and Ritos are my two favorite yeah. sizes. I hadn't smoked this in a long time. It's excellent, but size wise, I'd want. I just want more, so I gave it all a right. nice. So edit. where are you, Brian, on size personally? Robusto Toros. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the biggest it. selling stuff. That's it. I'm comfortable uh, with them. They, they, it's yeah. about the right amount of burn time. Um, That's the flavor I like in a Robusto. And strength-wise, this is mild for you? This is too mild for me, so I give it a, a 95. Okay. It's a great cigar. It's everything you said. It's smooth. It's creamy. Yeah. It's mild. But for me, you mentioned uh, the EP Carrillo, the Pledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's more my wheelhouse of... <sighs> yeah, it's strong. Uh, Way too strong for I me. I like the Same. pepper bombs. I like the Same. leather. I like the, you know, that dark roasted coffee. Yeah. That's and, and what we, I want on my palate. Have we mentioned the, the firecracker yet? <laughs> I can't remember. Press release went out. It did. Oh. Yes. Okay, so the firecracker this year is Pledge. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> it pledges way too strong for me. Yeah. Uh, that is a firecracker. It's just going to knock my head off. But that cigar yeah. was made for that purpose anyway. But uh, Pledge is special. It's very, very interesting. Uh, and we're going to have them up for um, the father and son uh, and daughter uh, event for Father's Day, too. So uh, hats off to them. But Pledge is your go-to type of? Flavor profile. Yeah. Is, yeah. I do smoke them quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but I just like that profile. And your first cigar you had, which was Padroni Anniversary back in the day. Yep. Is that a go-to for you now? No. No. I, it's... See, they, the guy ruined it for him <laughs> is what happened. That gave it to him. It's such a mistake Definitely. to give the guy on his first time out because you would have loved it normally, but, but they ruined you on I it. I smoke the family reserves a okay. couple times a year. And mm. my, my guests, my regular guests are always taken aback when they see me smoking a Padron because I don't often. That, something about that cigar... That taste and flavor lingers on my palate it sure for does. like 24 yeah. hours. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a long finish for sure. And it's very linear. How about something like um, the Drew Estate one, Liga Pavada? I don't, I don't like much Drew Estate stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. and Liga Pavada is another one. It just lingers way too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, but pe- mo- more people like both of those products than probably anything else, by the way, yeah. because they want a long finish mm-hmm. like that. Me, after I'm done smoking in Atabe, it's, it's so clean, it's done, and it doesn't stay with yep. me, and that's what I like about it. Yeah, But absolutely. other people like the opposite of what happens there. So, uh, Brian, great to have you here. Thank you for coming up. 
uh, and visiting the store and, and agreeing last minute. You didn't even know you are going to be on. No, it's a treat for me. Thanks <laughs> yeah. for having me. I meant to come and sit in the audience with Charlie and, and have yeah. some cigars and coffee and just relax. And uh, you no, put me up great, here. Great to have you up here. And if, if, if something goes wrong with your job and you come yeah. work here full there time and stuff, you've got a permanent position. If you I, thank you. I, <laughs> will, <laughs> I will say, though, don't think he's going to set up a GoFundMe. Yeah. No, yeah. Go yeah. Make you work. no GoFundMe. No GoFundMe. All right. Uh, Chrissy's back next week. Uh, and we'll uh, have the, hopefully the whole gang will be back together here and uh, we plan on having a new cigar to light up but we'll, we'll see if that comes in it has not come in yet so we'll see next week until then you've been listening to the Ash Holes broadcast from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio right above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire we'll see you next week Opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network,